People often want to know what's the best banana liqueur. Usually, it's a question that comes down to Jaffard vs. Tempest Fugit. While there are some other banana liqueurs out there, these are the two most popular ones that you'll find in recipes. Banana liqueur is an ingredient that rarely shows up in any historic tiki cocktails, but it was around at that time. Now, I have no idea why that's the case. My only guess is that out of all the tropical fruits that you would have been able to find in the 1930s to 60s, banana would be available year-round, cheap, and also very easy to find. So you wouldn't need a liqueur. But we don't really know why it was not used at that time, but it has become popular in recent years, and we see many more modern cocktails using it, and I'm assuming that's because we now have some higher quality liqueurs as well like the Jaffard and the Tempest Fugit. I also have a bottle of Dryad brand, which is a house brand from Total Wine. And I know some of their products are made by Remy Cointreau. And I also have a bottle of the infamous 99 Bananas. Now, before we taste these, the question people often have is why does banana flavor not taste like banana? Or not exactly. Runts, Laffy Taffy, and banana pudding are the big ones of note. And this is generally attributed to the flavor of banana being different today than it was 60 to 100 years ago. If you go to the grocery store today and buy a banana, it will be a Cavendish banana. But up until the 1960s, you would have been buying Gross Michel bananas, which were the dominant bananas, until they were completely wiped out by Panama disease. So the common belief is that banana flavor was created before 1960, and that's why the taste seems so much different than today. But that also might be somewhat of a, a myth or a conflation. That common compound that makes up the banana flavor is isoamyl acetate. And that's present in both kinds of bananas, but the Cavendish of today is more subdued and more complex than other flavors. And that artificial banana is a more pure, amped up banana flavor that's similar to those older Gross Michel style bananas. Before even trying these, I will tell you that these two are both great and you can't go wrong with them but will the $20 bottle hold up to these more expensive ones? And really, you know, how bad is 99 bananas? That's the question that we need to answer here. The Jaffard comes in at $33, Tempest Fugit at $35, Driad is at $20, and the 99 bananas comes in at a whopping $10. So to prepare for this, I just went to each one's website and pulled as much information as I could. There's not a lot on any of them and, and a couple of them, there's nothing. And, you know, I have some first impressions on pouring. One of the things I, I didn't look into at all and I will look into after I finish tasting is if I can see the sugar content for any of them. I don't know if any of them are gonna have that available online. And then another thing I noted was the Driad, which uh, you would kind of think is a competitor here to Jaffard. It says banana imitation liqueur, I did see that, but just pouring it from afar, you got a big uh, banana runt, artificial banana flavor. So I'm expecting that to be like that more intense banana flavor, similar to 99 Bananas. And also this 99 Bananas, this bottle's the newest out of all of these, even though I just opened this one. It is about a third full, but I haven't tried it. I ha I've had this like 20 years ago, but I haven't had it recently. I use this for something else, which we'll get to at the end. So let's start with, I think, what's kind of considered the, the best of the best, at least from my opinion in the past, and that's the Jaffard. It is 25% ABV, and they say it's a slow maturation of bananas, mostly from Brazil with natural banana flavorings and hints of cognac. Man, after getting a, that whiff of the Driad here, everything else it's so much more mellow this smell to me I, I think because i spent so much time trying to imitate and recreate uh dr barca's fluffy banana which is one of my favorite smuggler's cove cocktails that uh that's what i think about because it uses this and and that's what i've used the most i probably went through like a bottle of that uh just in that cocktail it's like a borderline cloying sweetness but it does have more of a like a ripe banana flavor not as much of the the caramel notes to it not as much as that like banana fosters thing that you can get with these it's good and subtle and it provides banana sweetness like if you've ever used bananas in kind of cooking to make i don't know like a pancake or something to be more healthy by using kind of sugar from the banana that's what it kind of tastes like it's just like a little bit more that banana bread and while vibrant it just it feels like it's going to be 
a little more subtle than the other ones. All right, the Tempest Fugit is 26% ABV and they say it is based on 19th century protocols. And that's kind of all they have about it. Now the color is darker and this is a bottle I've had for a while now, but I don't use it that often. I just kind of gravitate towards the Jaffard, not for any particular reason, but I did recently use this in a cocktail. I don't know if I've shared that here yet, but I do have a, a cocktail of Mai Tai Riff using this. And then I have another Mai Tai Riff I'm gonna use it with that's a riff off of that riff. So if you have one of these, a couple cocktails coming up with it. So let's try it. Ooh, on the nose, it is not as pleasant as the Jaffard. There's almost like a an off smell to it, like a like a spoiled smell. It is more viscous. Uh, it is a thicker mouthfeel in the glass, more viscous as well. It has a flavor that reminds me of if you ever had those kind of like baby dried out bananas. They they have this kind of intensely sweet uh, overripe banana. And in the past, I would have always said this this is more of a banana Foster's, a more caramel sort of like cooked banana, you know, kind of that more dessert-like and it is sweeter, but I feel like I'm changing my opinion here. I feel like this has more of the, you know, that like flambéed banana brown sugar note, like a little bit cleaner. And this has more of a real overripe banana. This one's 26% ABV. It's, it's one point higher than this one. These aren't, you know, strong but this one has like a little more of a, a tingle on your tongue. And this one has a little bit more of like a, a burn on the back of your palate. Uh, it's very subtle, not, not something that it's difficult to drink these neat. Uh, they're very sweet. This one feels uh, more cloyingly sweet than the Jabard. All right, now onto the Driad, which is also from France. It's 25% ABV. And like I said earlier, it's labeled as an imitation liqueur and I've never had it, never opened it. I didn't even know it was an imitation thing. I think I bought this over a year ago now. <laughs> That's a plan to make this video, which I just never got around to. Hmm. Oh, it's like runts and alcohol. I mean, that's that's what it is, but yeah, it's like a really strong banana Laffy Taffy. Very thin. Not, uh, it's not that good. On the nose, there's just, you know, I feel like the Laffy Taffy, that Laffy Taffy flavor, that artificial banana, it can be appealing, but it just, whatever's coming off of this glass is just not that appealing. I mean, my hope was that a $20 liqueur would get you in the ballpark of the $30, $35 liqueurs. It's not. I would never, ever recommend buying this instead of these two. You know, banana liqueur should last you a while. It's shelf stable is gonna last you forever theoretically, but just in terms of how much you use of it. And if you're using a lot of it, you don't want to be using this one. This is not good. It's bad. All right. And now for the OG, the 99 bananas. I remember first seeing this bottle probably when I was a kid. And uh, what's funny is if you go to their website, it kind of sums up everything you need to know, because the first thing you'll see is a button that says hard seltzer pairings. That's just perfect here. And taste the sweet tropics and let your imagination take over. All right, let's uh, let our imagination take over. I mean, first, uh, nail polish, just alcohol. <laughs> Hints of banana. All right, Jesus. Hmm. Ah, oh. oh, burns. All right, I don't need to, to taste any more of that. If you like taking shots of things, this is perfect for you. They give you shots on the back. The banana split, funky monkey, banana bombshell, usually a mix of 99 products. There are so many 99 products and all of them, of course, being 99 proof, which is why we're at 49.5% uh, uh, ABV. And uh, there's just, uh, if you go to their website, there's dozens and dozens of different 99 products. And, you know, if you need a banana liqueur to light on fire, that's the one for you. Now time for a little bonus because the reason I have the 99 bananas is because I made a long time ago, tropical standard banana bunch liqueur, which is basically 99 bananas 
and then the uh, dried out banana chips. Uh, I think the book calls for the Trader Joe's ones. If you do make that, make sure you don't get the organic ones. The organic ones are trash. The non-organic ones are delicious. And this has been in my fridge for, for six months. I don't know if I've tried it, to be honest. Not nearly as harsh as the 99 bananas and more banana flavor, uh, more banana smell coming off of it. Wow, that's like wildly different. And I wouldn't have guessed it would be those banana chips. It almost has like a like a little spicy cinnamon-ness to it. It's still the resemblance of 99 bananas, but it, it is better. I know there's at least one cocktail in the Tropical Standard book, which calls for it, which it, that's been on my list of things to do, and that's why I haven't used it yet. But if you wanted to uh, make that, uh, you do need an, a bottle of 99 bananas. You can't make the banana bunch uh, liqueur with these other ones. You, you got to have this one. All right, we're at the point in this journey where they all taste bad now. Uh, just, just tasting banana liqueurs is not fun. But I think it's hands down. Uh, it is Jaffard. I would, you know, if you only have access to Tempest Puget, it, it's good. It's going to work, especially in a cocktail, because that's where it matters. When you're putting in a cocktail, I, I don't know. I don't know why I would ever buy anything else. This is the best one by far. It is clean. It's not overly ripe. It's sweet. It kind of has that banana fosters, a brown sugar thing going on. And there's nothing about it that is off-putting. The rest of these have something about them that is slightly not there. But, I mean, the clear loser here is the Driad. That shouldn't be $20. It should be $10. All right, that's it for this one. I'm Derek. This is Make and Drink. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like below. Consider subscribing to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel more, go to the Patreon page, and you can check out more behind-the-scenes stuff there and some bonus content as well. All right. I'm done.